Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Uh, some of you may have noticed over the last couple of weeks a little bit of a subtle change in MeasureQuick, and that is when you go to your system information now, uh, we eliminated the airflow settings, so you don't have to set the airflow anymore, and we also eliminated the oversized evaporator coil. And we did this because most technicians weren't adjusting those to get the targets more refined, and what we did was we simply made an initial wider target band. So you can see those target bands are, are, very, are, are very wide there. And we're within the target band, right on the threshold uh, for, the, um, for the head pressure, but we're still you know, within the range. And the, obviously the suction pressure target's a, a fairly wide target there. Now, what that is, what those targets are so wide for, is it's showing you, you know, you could be anywhere from 350 CFM per ton to 450 CFM per ton. You could have a standard size evaporator, an oversized evaporator, and it'll fall within that target range. And in the case of the condensing unit here, uh, this condenser is actually, a, it's a Goodman system. And they really don't make a condenser coil anymore that is ton and a half. You know, you used to have like dedicated ton and a half, two ton, two and a half, three tons. Now today they're like using the same condenser for two ton and a ton and a half. They're just swapping out the compressor. And same thing with the air handler. You end up with this two ton evaporator coil, which is oversized slightly. You end up with this um, you, and you also end up with a, a, a two-ton condenser coil with a ton and a half compressor. So you end up with lower head pressure, higher suction pressure. That's what's giving these units this, this efficiency. But unless you dialed it in on measure quick, unless you understood all that uh, and selected the right sear ratings, you, you ended up being out of the target zone. So I'll just show you here. I'm going to put it back on. So if you like the old targets, you can just, there's a setting in general settings called advanced settings. Just click it on and I'll just take you back there. So now these are the advanced targets. So you can see that that head pressure is out of range. For some people, this is like concerning. And really what they needed to do was go into the you know, 13, 16 sear, select the higher efficiency, know that Goodman you know, has a 15 degrees condensing temp over ambient instead of the standard 20. If they would select that, then it would have fallen into range, right? But most people never made any adjustments to that. And you know, they, they'd end up at the standard condenser and with a, what looked like low head pressure. So what we did is we took out those targets and we looked and said, okay, well, realistically, you know, depending on, uh, this is the wide range of, of areas that it could fall and it would be acceptable. So what we did on this is after you optimize it, and this system's, you know, right now, just a couple of things. This is actually calculating airflow in real time. So right now I'm doing 429 standard CFM per ton. So it's no longer a setting, it's, and if you tap on it, it's going to tell you, you know, less than 360 optimized for humid climates and 360 to 440s moist climates, above 440s dry climates. Uh, it's telling you, you know, what you have it optimized for. And in fact, if you click on the flag, it'll tell you this is a 13 to 17 sear system with airflow optimized for a moist climate. And moist climates are what we call green grass states, right? Anywhere the grass is green, dry climates, brown grass climates wet climates, tropical climates, you know, where you're gonna see palm trees and uh, swamps. So uh, in this case here, you know, we're in a moist climate in Ohio. So this system's all optimized. And if you watch what happens now, when I hit the plus button and I set the benchmark, the target zones now shrink way down and it gives you, you know, the benchmark is set. The target zones shrink way down. And you'll also notice that this target is not exactly centered um, and I, I had touched the target zone there, it's not exactly centered. And that's because we're taking into account the effect of the latent load on here. So in this case, if we go inside, you'll see that return air is about 56%, which is a little bit higher uh, dew point temperature than the normal. And so this is our like our latent heat offset. Uh, this is something that Brian Orr and I discussed early on where we were looking at, you know, just the uh, uh, the effect of latent load on the evaporator coil. So we're just sort of showing that. If it was dry, uh, you would see that that target zone is, you know, uh, right in the middle where the where the carrot is. So it just makes it much, much easier to profile that system now because we don't have to know if we have an oversized evaporator or if we have a high efficiency condenser, we can just, you know, select, the uh, get, get the, you know, close to those things. And then when we benchmark the system, it's going to really lock in the equipment type and the installation parameters and just makes it overall easier. 
Again, if you want to turn that function off, you just go to the gear, hit the settings, and you can hit advanced targets. It'll turn it back the way it was. But we found uh, really over the last couple of weeks that this has been a huge help for people getting into measure quick. And it's the setting I would recommend. That, and that's why we made it the default setting. So this is Jim with Measure Quick. Uh, again, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the video. And if you would, please subscribe to our video channel. Uh, that's a huge help to us. We'd like to be able to reach out and tell you guys what we're doing and uh, you know all the constant improvements to Measure Quick. Thanks a lot for watching.